Zach, what's poppin'? How are you? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Tell me all the things. What's happening in your life right now? Um, right now, we're just doing a lot of traveling for shoots, and uh, we, we have a couple big ones coming up. Um, and then, yeah, that's that's about it. We're just filming videos all the time. A couple of big ones. Can you tell yeah. us what are some of the big ones? Or are they like top secret under lock and key? You can't say anything about it. We have a couple secret ones, but one big one we have coming up is we we just recently painted the world's largest Xbox. It's it's like a ten foot tall um, sure. of Xbox. Uh huh. Um, one of my friends, uh, he's the casual engineer on YouTube. He created this, and there's there's like literally a Guinness World Record for it. And and we spent two days painting it, and then we we gave it to. I, I I think it was like a children's hospital that we gave it to. That's so dope. It was really cool. Does the giant Xbox actually work? Yes, it does. It does. Is there a picture of this that I can see the world's uh, or is that like, is it not out yet? I I think the video where uh, he made it is out. So so you can actually see it working, but but we haven't released our video yet. I am so interested to see like what the world's giant Xbox Looks like, and that's so dope when you think about it, that the fact that you're painting it, and of course you guys gave it to a, a children's hospital uh, after, what, did, what made you, I guess, decide to even give it to a children's hospital after you guys were finished doing it? So, so it was my friend's idea to donate it, but a lot of the times when we do like make really big things, we like to give them away. And, and when he said uh, he wanted to donate it to something like that, I was like completely on board and we wanted to make a really fun design for it. That's amazing. Can you let us know why all of your handles are ZHC? Um, well, ZHC came from uh, my like first name, last name. Uh, so originally my uh, my handle was Zachary Shia mm -hmm. um, and then comic art because I originated um, from like comics. I, I really liked, liked graphic novels. I liked comics. Uh, so, so I kind of wanted to condense it because that was a name that was way too long. So it's Z H C. We love that. We love that. I want to know what made you, I guess, get started in, you know, the videos that you do, like what, what started that? Oh, well, it started a couple years ago. I, I really started to pick up art in high school and I, I started my social media career on Instagram where I was making a lot of art. And then after a year or two of making art on Instagram, I realized that I really wanted to connect with my audience a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I was told about this platform called YouTube. And originally on Instagram, I was only able to post my art. So people didn't really know who I was. People couldn't really interact with me. So once I started making YouTube videos, I, I made art, but I kind of did little vlogs around it so I can interact with my audience. And that slowly grew into bigger and bigger videos where I started meeting up with um, fans in real life, surprising them. And, and it became this like really big and fun community. And, and I just completely fell in love with YouTube. When you started putting your art on social media and YouTube and like, were you all in or was there a little bit of nervousness that came with that? Um, I, I, I was definitely nervous at first. I am a very introverted person. So whenever I put myself out there, I get extremely anxious. Um, so, so back then it was definitely a, a big risk for me and something I wasn't really used to doing. Uh, but, but, but after I started putting stuff out and, and I heard so much positive feedback and, and people really enjoyed the stuff, I think it really encouraged me to keep pushing and, and keep putting out content. And, and obviously I also really loved it. So you're an introvert. So is this your personal hell right now? I, I, I do get very nervous when it comes to just like meeting new people, uh, doing talks, talking in front of a lot, uh, front of a lot of people. I mean, I mean, I think I got a little more used to it now that I've been in the YouTube space for like four or five years. But um, like like deep down, I, I'm still a very introvert, introverted person. It's not necessarily something that you're comfortable with, right? Yeah. yeah. Which I feel and like I think on, And I think on YouTube, it's something that's like very relatable to a lot of people too, because, because a lot of um, people out there are also introverted and, and they're very nervous putting anything out there. And, and I think a lot of people can connect when, when I don't pretend to be someone I'm not. And, and when I do film videos, like I, 
I do let people know that that I'm still like extremely nervous going up to people when I'm surprising people in public. I am extremely scared to do that, even though I've 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 been doing it for so long. It's interesting because when I first started, I used to be the same way, super mm-hmm. super introvert, and I think to an extent, I'm I'm a, I'm an introvert at heart. Like I couldn't speak in front of people. I couldn't speak in front of a large room, and I think I. I honestly had to hype myself up in the bathroom before I oh, even yeah. did anything to like, really, like I used to ask myself, how do you really want to do this? Like, is this, do you want this to be your, like I had to give myself a pep talk before I did, you know, public speaking and the like, are you the same way before you go up to people and surprise them? I, I definitely am. So when I first started doing public giveaways, I think the first time I did a public giveaway was when I bought 11 iPhones. I painted all of them and I wanted to give them to people in public. So I was walking around um, a college campus and I had my girlfriend with me. She was my videographer. And each time before we went up to someone to surprise them, she'd kind of give me like a little pep talk beforehand. I'd take a couple deep breaths and then I'd be like, okay, okay, like, like time to perform on camera. And I'd go up, interact, and, and obviously they'd be super excited. Um, cause, cause they're, uh, receiving a free custom iPhone, but, but I also realized since, since I'm very introverted and I'm not like the best with like interactions, uh, when, when people get emotional or people are like super excited, Me too. I, I'm, I a really robot. To I'm a robot. I have no idea how to respond. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, and you know, what's, what's interesting, like when you do things like that, you have a tendency to have to have small talk. And I feel like yeah. if I'm having small talk, a little piece of me is dying. Are you the same way? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I am a very similar way where um, I, I try my best to make small talk and conversations, but it's always like a, a little bit uncomfortable if it's not like done in the right way. I remember one time this uh, this kid came up to my door and then when I opened it, he just started crying and he was in tears and I just had no idea how to react. I just I probably stood there for like 30 seconds and 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 after a while I was just like, oh, uh, like, do you need a tissue or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I would have sh- shut the door and be like, hey, when you stop crying, knock again. But oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I am like not good with emotions. I'm not good. Like, I'm good with, of course, happy. But if you came mm-hmm. to my doorstep and started crying, I would have no idea how to react. Yeah. Like at all, Zach. <laughs> like no clue. So how do you get yourself through that then? Um, I, I, I guess for me, I just kind of because because for me, I, I really like challenging myself and taking on new obstacles. And I knew just like interacting with people um, was a, a really big fear of mine growing up. And it was it was very hard for me to overcome. But with 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 all this like feedback I, I got from YouTube, um, I, I really wanted to push myself to see if I could do it. And I think I'm definitely much better than I was a couple of years ago. But, but I still get nervous every time I go up to someone in public. I mean, I feel like that's, you know, you're still excited about it if you get nervous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I want to talk about you customizing a hospital and pay for everyone's medical bills. Oh, like, yeah, how, yeah. How, how was that? We, we weren't able to pay for everyone's because it was such a huge hospital, but we, we were able to donate a lot and contribute a decent amount. I, I think the biggest takeaway from that was we, there, there were so many fans in the hospital. We were, we were walking by and we just wanted to say hi to every single person there because 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 obviously at a hospital uh it's it's very tough and emotional so when we were painting uh patients would be like walking by and and they just be so happy to see us and see the murals and 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 we were even able to like do like small collaboration pieces where we had the patients like draw up an initial sketch and we would um turn it into our own style and like put it on a giant wall and patients were like so excited to see that so it was it was a really fun experience and and it was definitely one of the most uh, rewarding videos my my team and I have ever filmed. I will say that you're in tip, you're not like a typical content creator. Like you definitely have formed your own wedge and your own lane mm-hmm. path in life. Uh I feel like you are honestly working to make the planet a better place. That that definitely is a goal. Uh I, I know early when I started out, I really loved art and I really loved YouTube, but, but whenever I made art, I, I felt like I wasn't really making a big contribution in my opinion. I was kind of making art for myself, for my audience to see, but we, we started incorporating, like giving our art away uh, 
to people. So we would paint like big things and we would give it to people and just seeing how like surprised and excited they are by the, the piece we give them just, just made my team and I very excited too. So we just wanted to keep doing it. That's amazing. Tell us about your tiny home village project. Oh yeah. So I think we filmed that video a year ago, but LA hit us, um, the, the city of LA hit us up with this enormous project. And, and I think we painted 117 tiny homes or something, but, uh, there, there is a really big, uh, homeless issue in LA and what they were doing is they wanted to provide homes so that, uh, people experiencing homelessness could, um, stay there temporarily and get back on their feet. And our, our vision for that was we really wanted to brighten the place up. We really wanted to um, make it feel like it's, it, it's like a very fun place to be. So we gathered up a, a huge team of artists. We, we got maybe like 50 people painting and we painted all 117 houses with like cool graphic design. Some of them had fruits on it. Some of them had animals. Some of them, uh, some of them had like cool patterns and backgrounds. And, 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 and that was a really big project. There were a lot of artists and, and people behind the scenes, uh, but it was really fun to just collaborate and, and do something that, that helps so many people. How do you feel when the city of LA reaches out and asks you to do something like that? I mean, not gonna lie, it's pretty cool that that they would just just hit me up um, for for a project that big. Because, because I mean, for me, I know there's like so many people that could take on this project, but the fact that they chose me and my team um, was was a very big honor. And and for me, it's it's something I'm very passionate about too. So uh, we were very very excited to work with them on that. What are you working on next? Um. For our upcoming videos, we we have a couple in the works. We we have like that giant Xbox video. Um, we we really want to do something with an animal shelter. That's that's something I've been wanting to do for a while. We we might not be able to film it for the next couple months, but that's something I want to do. And we're trying to do a couple of these like very very big projects um, revolving a lot around storytelling. So so yeah, that's coming up for us. What advice would you give someone trying to break out and be a content creator and just, you know, make their mark on the world? What would you say to that person? Um, usually for each up and coming creator, um, I think for each creator, it's different, but, but generally speaking for an up and coming creator, I would say one, choose a niche or type of content that you love doing. So if you love cooking, make videos about cooking. If you love like architecture, make videos about architecture. If you love art, make art. Um, because, because I feel like passion and your love for the content you're creating is so important for longevity. Mm -hmm. I think if you're not doing something you love within like two or three years, you're, you're going to burn out. But, but if you really love it, you're going to be able to continue going for many, many years and just keep experimenting with different styles of content until you find something that works for you, your audience, it's something you enjoy making. And um, it's, it's a lot of trial and error, but it starts with finding one thing you're really passionate about and working really hard and trying out a ton of different styles. It was a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and, uh, and just letting us know what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on.